case. So if you guys are interested in doing science, like some serious science over the summer, um, you should go for it. It's it's a great experience and it's really fun. If any of you guys know that you're on the schedule and have not picked an article, can you please send the article to me ASAP? Okay, my article is entitled High Molecular Mass, High Load, and Mediates the Cancer of the Naked Mole Rat. That's a really complicated title, and it's by these all these these guys. I much prefer of rodents and men, how the world's ugliest rodent, this thing, might help us cure cancer. Nice reference. So let's talk a little bit about the naked mole rat. This is the naked mole rat. I'm going to give you a second to laugh about its name and its appearance so that we can get that over with. Okay, everyone good? Let's move on then. The naked mole rat is a type of subterranean rodent. It's a rodent that lives in tunnels underground. And perhaps we shouldn't have laughed at it because it might outlive some of you because previous studies have shown that the naked mole rat has a really, really high life expectancy, particularly for a rodent. It has, it's, some like, ro um, naked mole rats have been shown to live 30 years or more which compared to a common garden mouse is only about five years. But what was more interesting for the purposes of this article is that naked mole rats were shown to have marked cancer resistance, which is obviously a phenomenon that scientists want to investigate. Now, this next slide might seem a little disjointed, but it's important to help you, you guys understand what's going on in my presentation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are a type of stem cell. They look like this. Stem cells are just cells in the body that replicate and produce more cells. So, in a way, they're in a way they're similar to cancer cells, but cancer cells replicate without control, without order, and they just form unsightly masses called tumors, which are bad for you. Stem cell regulation is very controlled, very regulated. There are two types of fibroblasts that this article focused on: embryonic fibroblasts, which are fibroblasts in embryos, as the name suggests and skin fibroblasts, which are part of the skin and are responsible for helping to replenish cells that, uh, skin cells that, are, that die or, and producing important proteins that help keep the skin together. Does everyone have, anyone have any questions about what a fibroblast is or what it does? No? Okay. So the next thing my article focused on is this macromolecule called hyaluronin. Hyaluronin is a macromole macromolecule produced by these fibroblasts. This is what hyaluronin looks like. As you can see, it consists of a glucuronic acid subunit attached to an antiseptic glucosamine subunit. Yeah? I was wondering if you were going to make it clear that you're only allowed to use four complicated words during this presentation and that we're going to go, eh, if you use more than that. <laughs> Fine. Ignore what that, the caption on that picture says, if you prefer. And I won't say those words. Basically, this is what it looks like. I just thought it was interesting. Basically, it's not a, hyaluronin isn't a protein. It's a Carbohydrate. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. That's not a macromolecule, it's really small. Let me raise my hand and call them out on it. Well, actually, you'd be wrong because this is just the monitor unit of hyaluronin. A bunch of these get strung together in order to make um, a polymer that's what we call hyaluronin. What's interesting about hyaluronin is you take is its function is dependent on the number of subunits of this that are attached to it. So if you have just a few, something that looks like this, where each of these represents a hyaluronin. Yes, ha ha ha. Um, you get you get what's called low molecular mass hyaluronin, or or light hyaluronin, for short. Why are you laughing so much? <laughs> okay. Um, and light or low molecular mass hyaluronin has the effect of actually encouraging cell growth and inflammation, which is the opposite effect of what heavier, looking more like this, or high molecular mass hyaluronin looks like. <laughs> we can all laugh, yes. And basically that has, the, that has been shown to have the effect of decreasing cell proliferation and decreasing cancerous growth. Does anyone have any questions about what hyaluronin is or what the two different types are and what they do? No? Okay. So, oh yeah? Are you going to get into how it functions? Yeah, I'm going to get into that. Just a few more quick terms that are going to be used in this article. These don't count towards that limit because they're used in graphs and I have to explain them correctly. As we said before. 
So the first of these is HAase2. That's short for hyaluronic synthase 2. That's just a really complicated way of saying a protein that makes high molecular mass hyaluronic. The long chain for the HA is the ha 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 ha. <laughs> HAase is a protein that breaks down any type of hyaluronic. It's a general term. There are more specific types of hyaluronic that break down light or heavy hyaluronic. Uh, sorry, of HAase that break down light or heavy hyaluronic, such as HYAL2, which specifically breaks down the long ha 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 chain of hyaluronic. <laughs> Just as a quick side note, the HA HAase would work by cleaving this bond here and breaking it up into those two subunits. That's not important for the article, but that's why we can use it. ECI is a protein found in naked mole rat skin fibroblasts that was previously determined by these scientists to be a tumor suppressor. And what they want, they thought that hyaluronin played a role in this ECI pathway. So they wanted to look at what exactly the interaction between ECI and hyaluronin was. And finally, CD44 is a is a cell surface protein receptor. Basically, it's a protein on the surface of skin fibroblasts that receives signals, in this case hyaluronin, and transmits them into the cell. So it basically acknowledges the presence of high molecular mass hyaluronin for skin fibroblasts. I could have stopped explaining. I, I was not. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about any of the terms? Because they're going to be important later. I'll, I'll go back over them when they become relevant. But Okay. Have I lost any of you? You can answer that one. Okay, that's good. Because I'm going to ask you a question now. So what's the difference between HAs and HYALC? You should put your answers into the thing that we put over there. On the board. Medium thicker. Does everyone understand that? <coughs> they did there? 
So the next thing they did is they wanted to determine, as I mentioned previously, ECI was a protein that they found to be a tumor suppression. They believed that hyaluronic and ECI were linked. So this next row, what they did was they used uh, napiomorexin fibroblasts that were mutated, yeah? I'm sorry, what was the relate? Okay, so stop saying viscosity, and uh, what's the relationship between ECI and hyaluronic? I'm getting to that. Oh, I thought you just said it. No, I was about to say it. Um, they believe, they previously, before this article, they believed that ECI led to the production of hyaluronic. So what they did is they took cells, naked more skin fibroblasts, that didn't have, they did, that were deficient in this ECI. They didn't produce ECI. And they wanted to see their, the relative viscosity, yeah, I'm not allowed to say that, the thickness of the liquid. So basically the level of hyaluronic. And they found that even though it couldn't produce these, these proteins, these cells couldn't produce the protein ECI, they still produce enough hyaluronic to thicken the liquid significantly. So basically, because of because of this, they know that ECI can't lead to the production of hyaluronic because if there wasn't any ECI, then there wouldn't be any hyaluronic, and the liquid wouldn't be as thick. Does that make sense to everyone? And finally, they took maybe more embryonic fibroblasts and put them in this in this medium, and they found that it didn't get significantly thicker. More on why that is later. So next, what they did is they took um, naked mole rat skin, uh, skin tissue and heart tissue, along with the skin and heart tissue of guinea pigs and mice, and they stained it with something called alskin blue. Alskin blue they, is a stain that binds to hyaluronic, and it turns blue when it does so, hence the name. So then, so as you can see, there's a lot more blue in, these, in this picture, which is the skin fibroblast of the naked mole rat than the guinea pig or the mouse. And the same thing with the heart tissue. But when they add HA, this, this bar and this bar here, all that blue goes away, meaning that the hyaluronin was broken down and there was no more blue because there's no more hyaluronin. Does everyone understand that? Does anyone have any questions about that? I think I've got another question for you. So according to the previous graph, that's the bar graph, not this, what, which is more likely? ECI leads to the production of hyaluronin or hyaluronin leads to the production of ECI? If you have any, if you want to ask any questions, you should ask them now as well. If your question is, I have no clue what that means, that's okay. Could you please explain what that means? Uh, which, sorry, what exactly? Um, so the question? Would, uh, which is the longer one and which is the shorter? <clears throat> Hyaluronin is just a general term, meaning either the longer or the shorter, shorter version. Okay. So. And then ECI is a protein that they that scientists were working with previously in naked mole rat skin fibroblasts, and they found that it helped to prevent the spread of cancer, the proliferation of cancer. Sorry, that was confusing. These questions are about half and half. Should I just give the answers? Or? Okay, so if you remember the bar graph here, what they did is they took naked mole rat skin fibroblasts that didn't have ECI, so they couldn't produce ECI. And they found that those um, skin fibroblasts still produced large amounts of hyaluronin. So that means that the ECI couldn't have caused them to produce hyaluronin, because otherwise, if they didn't have any ECI, they wouldn't have any hyaluronin. So it's more likely that hyaluronin leads to the production of ECI, though they haven't proven that just yet. So does that, yeah? Could the viscosity have been caused by something other than the hyaluronin? Well, when they added HA to the culture, the, the, the um, relative viscosity was increased, so it would have to be something else that gets broken down and degraded by HA. So they did a spin test to the they just, um, other? As in the, the I don't believe they did, no. Anything else? So next they wanted to basically determine why naked mole rat skin fibroblasts have this extra hyaluronin, why they have more of it. So they wanted to look at the levels of two different proteins, HAAS2, which is right here, and HA2, which remember, HAAS2 is a protein responsible for making more high molecular mass hyaluronin. HAAs are responsible for breaking down hyaluronin. So here what they did is they took three hyaluronin synthases, HAAS1 through 3, and showed the levels of, and did a Western blot to show the levels of these proteins in various different types of cells. 
HAAS 1 and 3 are responsible for making low molecular mass hyaluron. Ha, ha, ha. And as you can see, there's not a significant difference between the levels of them in naked mole rat skin fibroblasts, naked mole rat embryonic fibroblasts, or human and mouse skin fibroblasts. But HAAS 2, which is responsible for making the longer, bigger, high molecular mass hyaluron, which has the effect of slowing down the growth of cancer, there's a lot more HAAS2 in naked mole rat skin fibroblasts than in naked mole rat embryonic fibroblasts of the other two. Can you go over that a little bit slower? Sure, sorry. So basically, HAAS2, this protein here, is responsible for making high molecular mass hyaluronic, the big change of hyaluronic. And HAAS1 and 3 are responsible for making the little change of hyaluronic. So, so basically what they wanted to do is they wanted to see, is the reason that naked mole rat skin fibroblasts produce more high molecular mass hyaluronin because of this extra of this protein HAAS2. And as you can see, there's a lot, there's these darker <coughs> bars here under the naked mole rat skin fibroblast, meaning that there's more of that protein in the naked mole rat skin fibroblast than in the end, than the embryonic fibroblasts or the other two exams, which are human skin fibroblasts. Does everyone get that? Does anyone have any questions? What's the biggest difference between embryonic fibroblasts and skin fibroblasts? I'm going to get to that at the end. Okay. Sorry. Any other questions? Well, it, I'll kind of partially answer your question. They found that embryonic fibroblasts don't produce this large amount of hyaluronin. As to why that is, I'm going to get to that at the end. Yeah? Wait, so HS, <coughs> HS1 and H, uh, you said HAS2 have the same. Right? Yes, they both, make they both make low molecular mass hyaluronic. But how come it seems that the three like is almost controlled by the MS hyaluronic or the other one? I I don't know that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, because the difference between skin fibers and sorry, skin fibroblasts and embryonic fibroblasts <coughs> is just a one is like, very different. The embryonic fibroblasts have the same amount of yeah. Short ones, right? Basically, but the different amount of the thicker ones, too. Yeah? So the naked mole rat fibroblasts are stickier? They, when you put them in the liquid, the liquid gets thicker. So what you're telling me is the naked mole rat may live longer because they're thicker. Essentially, yes. Well, there's a pathway that I'm going to get into to explain exactly why that happens. So in addition, they wanted to test the levels of HAs in the naked mole rat skin fibroblasts. Remember, HAs is a protein that breaks down hyaluronin. So what they did is they took hyaluronin and they incubated it with a bunch of different cells. So, and they measured how much hyaluronin was left after a certain amount of time. Because if there was not a lot of hyaluronin left, that means that that cell type produced a lot of HAs to break down the hyaluronin. Does everyone understand what that? Okay, so the control, obviously, 100% of it was left because they didn't incubate it with any cells. The naked mole rat skin fibroblasts had about the same amount. There's very, very little HAAs activity in the naked mole rat skin fibroblasts, especially compared to the guinea pig, human, and mouse skin fibroblasts, which you see here, which have a lot less hyaluronin percentage-wise left over. They also looked at HeLa cells, HeLa cells being a type of human cancer cell, and you would expect there to be less more HAAs activity and less hyaluronin left over, high molecular mass hyaluronin left over, because high molecular mass hyaluronin is an anti has anti-cancerous effects. So you would expect there to be less high molecular mass hyaluronin in these cells that are cancers. Does that make sense, everyone? Yes? No? This is some confusing. Okay, well, I guess I'll find out, because the next question is, why do we expect these HeLa cells to have low levels of high molecular mass hyaluronin? You can just give a simple answer if you want. It doesn't have to be really long and complicated. Are you going to talk about the molecular uh, function? I'm going to get to that. Sorry. I know, I know. This question is from all the Are you just gone? Uh, is anti 
<laughs> Correct. The third one, not so much. Um, basically, these HeLa cells, remember, are cancer cells. And the hmm ha ha, the long train, the long strings of high molecular mass of hyaluronin, are responsible for anti cancer activity. So you'd expect there to be less of that in cancer cells because if there were more of it, you wouldn't get cancer. But you, I wouldn't say you wouldn't get cancer, but it would be less likely that you get cancer. Everyone understand that? Okay. So next what they wanted to do is they wanted to see how this high molecular mass hyaluron, what its effect was on cancer cells, on cancer cells. So what they did is they took uh, naked mole rats in fibroblasts, they put them on a plate and allowed them to proliferate free, to grow free. And as you can see from day 27, from day 7 to day 21, there wasn't a significant amount of more cells, per se, than there was previously. I mean, there obviously was some growth, but it wasn't as ridiculous as down here when you have this lawn of rapidly proliferating, uncontrollably dividing cells. This is basically cancer in a petri dish. This is not cancer. And in this slide, in these pictures, they added HAH, which remember breaks down the hyaluronin. So when you have hyaluronin, you don't get cancer. When you don't, when you don't have hyaluronin, you do get cancer. Does everyone understand? Yeah? All four of these pictures basically look the same to me. How is it that the one in the bottom right has a lot more cell growth than the one in the top left? I don't, I'm not sure whether you can see this, but... Well, it's, it's, yeah, there are lots of So if you look at the little dark spots, there's more dark, there's more small dark spots than there in the bottom. Small dark spots in the cell. It's like if they were fish, you'd think there were more fish in the bottom one. Okay, I got it. I can see it. Yeah. Did both... Um, What? Did both the groups of cells start in the Yeah. Same? They all started to cave here, which is in the challenge of this stage. Basically, they put a few cells on the bottom of the So then they measured, basically, they put this into bar graph form. They measured the number of cells on each plate. I don't know how they did this, but kudos to whoever counted them. Um, so they, they found that mouse skin fibroblasts had a large amount of cells on each plate, which you expect because they don't have this anti And you have naked mole rat skin fibroblasts with the inability to produce ECI. They don't, you still see an uncontrollable proliferation comparable with the end with the mouse skin fibroblasts, which implies that ECI is important in this pathway because cells that don't have ECI, even though they produce hyaluronin, don't have this anti cancer effect. So hyaluronin and ECI are related, which implies, in this case, because you know that ECI doesn't lead to the release of hyaluronin, which is this previous graph, we know that. Hyaluronin comes before ECI in this pathway. Does everyone get that? I'm kind of confusing right now. <clears throat> okay. So next, they added, they, this is just the normal naked mole rat skin fibroblasts, and it's not very many cells per plate compared to the others. When you add AAH, that number shoots back up, it's up to here. And when you <laughs> have naked mole rat skin fibroblasts that don't have this CD44 protein, protein that receives the signal from hyaluronin, you don't get these same effects. So basically, the receptors of, so basically, if you don't have this receptor, you can't make hyaluronin. Rather, you, the hyaluronin that's made has no effect. And it doesn't, you don't see this anti-cancer pathway. Is there any, yeah? Can cells produce the hyaluronin and then these receptors start receiving and then that? What they think happens is that High molecular mass hyaluronin activates CD44, this receptor, and then somewhere down the line that leads to the production of ECI. If any one of those elements doesn't work right, you don't get this anti cancer effect. So ECI is the thing that's actually stopping the yeah. cell growth. Okay. I think I'm just going to have to skip this last slide of results because it's just such a long time. So. Just one final point, because I have a bunch of people asking about this. Why does, why does the naked mole rat have this transplant? Why does it have these high levels of high molecular mass hyaluronin, and why only in the skin fibroblasts? Well, the answer might be because the naked mole looks like this. Yeah. 
Basically, high molecular mass hyaluronic has another function. It plays important roles in making the skin more elastic. And as you can see, or rather, it plays important roles in regulating skin elasticity. And naked mole rats have kind of droopy skin because they live their lives underground. They have to go navigate the narrow tunnels, and if their skin were tight, then it would peel off every time that they went up against the wall. So scientists believe that they developed this um, high molecular mass hyaluronin as a way of preventing their skin from peeling off every time they walk through the tunnel. And then this cancer resistance and increased lifespan was just a very happy, lucky side effect of that. I don't know about that, but that's what the scientists More as an experience. Sure. I'm sure that I will not make a comment for that. So if I look like that, I'd be unhappy. But does anyone have any questions about anything I've presented so far? Yeah. Um, I understand why you say that Malai the mole rat has these qualities, but why did they know to pick them for naked mole rat to do that? Uh, previous studies on the naked mole rat had shown that they that they tend not to get cancer. They observed a colony of naked mole rats, and I don't believe a single one of them. The answer to that is rodents are not FDA watched. So a lot of research can happen on rodents without any kind of approval from any government body. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Rodents aren't FDA watched. Because they're rodents. <laughs> Nobody loves rodents. All rodents. On a scale of one to happy bear. How badly did I confuse you? Ah. <laughs> I know, I want to do study them. All right, can somebody help us? Our IRT members, can you help us put them coming back together? Oops. That was probably a fever. It's probably not here on account of a fever. All right. Um, you guys are going to get first flex break. Can you pull out the information on the computer? Good job. Really good job. I wish I could have highlighted the other slide that the, the last slide. I like the other slide. I can show that you're out of time. I am part of the Yeah. Um, go down to the lab and take the place out from the incubator. Put them in the microphone. Oh, yeah. Not freeze them, just cold them down. Um, and then. Wait, Mr. D, we can store plates in the minus 20, right? No, why would you store plates in the minus 20? Good. Where should we take them out? After, where should we store them after you put them in the incubator? Four degree. Never four freeze. Degree. Oh, that's what I meant. Sorry. Uh, four degree. Minus four, not the minus one. Not minus four. Four. Minus four. Four, four. four. four plus. I know. Minus four. The big one. I, I, I understand. Four. I was uh, four. Uh, yeah? Can For, you, you have to we ask me right running, now? Yeah, it's about his presentation. Okay. We were running through it last night. Yeah. I think it's too much to have all four questions. Okay, you can skip over one. We want to take out the last one. Sure. The last one was... Okay, don't close this after you're done. Yeah, that. Okay. Then we have to stop recording. Get rid of that? Yeah. Don't go, don't go. I do Make sure this is ready. On. I put the keys on his desk. Where's this thing you're doing? Idiot. 
during the presentation, and that's where you're going to answer if everything works properly. If not, this is an entirely uh, silly waste of time, but uh, it's something we're going to try. Um, Rockefeller applications have been 